In this video, we're going to learn how to simplify rational expressions. So before we begin, let's talk about what a rational expression actually is. So by definition, a rational expression is a fraction whose numerator and denominator are non-zero polynomials. So this can range from something as simple as, you know, 5 over x, which is a very, very simple polynomial, to something that's a little more complicated, such as 3x plus 2 over, you know, 4x minus 7. And then it can become something even more complicated, such as, let's say, x squared minus 4x plus 6 over x squared minus 8x minus 10. So what you're going to notice is that regardless of whether we have something simple, like over here on the left, or more complicated, like over here on the right, it's all the basic idea that a numerator and a denominator are both non-zero polynomials that make up this fraction. Now what we're going to focus on in this video is how we can simplify rational expressions. And there is a simple property that we can use that will allow us to simplify rational expressions by using our knowledge of factoring. So here, by definition, it says let a, b, and c be expressions where b and z are not equal to zero. So what this part right here is basically saying is that if you have something times, you know, you label something as c, divided by something also times c. So let's say we have something like, you know, 5x times 2 over 7y times 2. So in this case, what you would have is you would have a is equal to 5x, b is equal to 7y, and c is equal to 2. Because a is being multiplied in the numerator by 2, and b is being multiplied in the denominator by 2, because they're both being multiplied by the same value, we can actually cancel that value they have in common that they're being multiplied by and simplify this to be something as simple as 5x over 7y. So basically what simplifying rational expressions is, is it's a creative way of simplifying a fraction. And we know that if we can find a common factor, we can simplify those fractions as long as they're multiplied by the same thing in the top and the bottom. Now where this comes in and becomes a little more complicated is if you have something like, you know, x minus 5 times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 7. Now, if you look here, this is slightly more complicated, but we'll notice that in our numerator and in our denominator, we are multiplying by a similar value. We have x plus 2 in both the numerator and the denominator. So we would set c equal to x plus 2, and then we would have an a value equal to x minus 5, and a b value equal to x minus 7. So if we are multiplying by the same thing in both the numerator and the denominator, so you can see we're multiplying by that same value, we can essentially cancel it out, and then we can write with our, with our remainder x minus 5 over x minus 7. So that's the general idea here, is that we'll be looking to set up multiplication problem in the top, a multiplication problem in the bottom, and then looking for common values, which we'll call c, that if we're being multiplied by them, can be canceled out very easily. So let's dive in and take a look at a couple of examples. So what you're going to notice here to start is that in both of these examples, we currently don't have any multiplication going on. Remember, to use this trick, we need a times c over b times c. So we need to have multiplication taking place. So in order to create multiplication out of a polynomial, we are going to need to use our knowledge of factoring. So we have a lot of different factoring strategies that we've learned before, and we're going to have to use our knowledge of factoring to kind of figure out how we can factor out these different polynomials. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the top and the bottom separately. And we're going to see if we can factor them out so we can write the numerator 
as a multiplication problem and the denominator as a multiplication problem. So here, what I notice is that if I look at 5x minus 10, this isn't going to be a problem where I can factor out a trinomial. So it, it doesn't have an x squared, so it's not going to be super complicated. But what I notice is that between 5x and negative 10, we have a greatest common factor of 5. So what I can do with my numerator is I can factor out a 5, and I can write this as 5 times x minus 2. So notice, in this new way that I've written it, I have a multiplication problem here. I have 5 times x minus 2. Then I realize in my denominator, I also have a GCF of 5. And I can factor out a 5 there. So I end up with 5 times, this becomes 3x minus 4. So notice here that for each of them, I was able to use the greatest common factor factoring strategy in order to factor a 5 out in front and then set up a multiplication problem of 5 times x minus 2 in the numerator and 5 times x minus th or 3x minus 4 in the denominator. So I was able to rewrite it using the greatest common factor. Now because I did this, I have a multiplication problem taking place with a common value. Both the numerator and the denominator have a multiplication of 5. And because they both have that multiplication of 5, we're able to cancel them out, and we are simply left with an answer of x minus 2 over 3x minus 4. Now, because there's no longer any multiplication taking place, it's just the x minus 2 in the top and the 3x minus 4 in the bottom, we can simply write x minus 2 over 3x minus 4. So now let's take a look at problem number 2. So here, this one is a little bit more complex. What we notice is that our rational expression in the numerator and the denominator both contain an x squared. So essentially what this is telling you is that when we factor and we have an x squared in the top and the bottom, we, if we can factor it, are going to have to factor it into a form that's parenthesis piece times parenthesis piece because that is the only way that we're going to be able to rewrite it as multiplication. So if it's just x, you can look for a greatest common factor over here. But when you have an x squared, it's going to factor into parentheses times parentheses. So we're going to have to think back to our different factoring strategies. And what I remember as we think about our factoring strategies is we use the ABC strategy where we looked at the values of A, B, and C quite often. So let's give that strategy a try first. So here I notice that I have a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to negative 12. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 12, but add to be negative 4. So if this is factorable, I'll be able to find two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 4. And if I start thinking through my factors of negative 12, I realize that if I have negative 6 and a positive 2, that those two numbers multiply to be a negative 12, but add to be a negative 4. So I can rewrite the numerator of my fraction to be x minus 6 times x plus 2. Because remember, when we have an a value equal to 1, we can jump immediately into factored form. When we have an a value that's not equal to 1, it's a little bit more complicated, but a equals 1 allows us to jump immediately into that form. Now, let's take a look at the denominator. So if I look here at the bottom, I notice that I again have an a value equal to 1. I then have a b value that's equal to 0. The reason there's no x term here is because there's a 0 times x that we just didn't write out there. And then we have a c value that is equal to negative 4. So if this is factorable, I'll be able to find two numbers that multiply to be negative 4 but add to be 0. And if I start thinking about that, I realize that I have the numbers 2 and negative 2. So because I found two values that work and my a value is 1, I can jump immediately into that form. So I have x plus 2 times x minus 4. Now another thing to note about this denominator piece is this is also the difference 
of squares that we've talked about in the past, which means that if we have a value squared minus another value that is squared, so in this case this would be x squared minus 2 squared because 4 is 2 squared, then you can write it as a minus b times a plus b. So that's essentially what took place here, is we had two items being squared, so we were able to use our difference of squares. So if you need to write down that factoring strategy to remember it, go ahead and do that. Now the final step here is that we need to simplify this. And what I notice is that these smushed together parentheses are multiplication. And so what we're going to be able to do is because we have multiplication taking place, we can cancel out any factors that we see in common. Well, here I notice that both the numerator and the denominator contain an x plus 2. So my simplified expression is going to be x minus 6 over x minus 4. Now the last thing we have to do here is because we canceled out a term that contained an x, is we have to look in the denominator and make sure that we account for this because while x minus 6 over x minus 4 is the simplified form, we do have to note that in the denominator, x could not equal 2 because that would result in this denominator equaling 0. So we're going to put a little comma here and write x also cannot equal 2 even though it's not shown in this equation because in the original equation it would make the denominator equal to 0. So let's take a look at another set of examples. So what we're going to focus on here is using our factoring strategy so that we can rewrite these so we have components that we can cancel out in common. So here in my numerator, I notice that I have a lot of x values going on. I don't think I'm going to be able to write it as a trinomial, but I notice that they have a greatest common factor here. Both 9 and 12 are divisible by 3, and then they both contain at least an x squared. So here we have 3x squared that we factored out, and then we're left with 3x minus 4 on the inside here. Now, the bottom just contains one term, but my goal here is to get it to match something that is being multiplied by in the top. So what I can do here in the denominator is I can basically say, well, is there any way that I can rewrite this expression to be 3x squared times something? And I know that I can. I know that this technically can be split up into 3x squared times 2. It's just breaking apart that problem into some multiplication. So if I break this up, we have 3x squared times 2. I all of a sudden have multiplication taking place, and I have something in the numerator and the denominator that is in common. So I can cancel those out, and those essentially are now gone. And we can write 3x minus 4 over 2 as our simplified rational expression. Now because we canceled out something with an x, we have to basically check when that might equal 0, and that equals 0 when x itself equals 0, because we would divide by 3 in square root. But essentially what I'm going to note here is that while well, 3x minus 4 over 2 is the simplified expression, x cannot equal 0. So now let's move on and take a look at number 2. So here we have two trinomials, one in the top, one in the bottom. So I'm going to try out the ABC strategy first. So here I have A is equal to 1, B is equal to negative 14, and C is equal to 48. So in order to simplify this using that ABC strategy, I know I need to find something that multiplies to 48 and adds to negative 14. So we multiply to what a times c is, add to b, which is negative 14. And if I think that through, I find negative 8 and negative 6. Now because my a value is equal to 1, I can use the shortcut where I write this as x minus 8 times x minus 6. Then if I take a look at my denominator, I have a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 30. So again, I need two numbers that multiply to a times c, which is negative 30, add to b, which is negative 1. Well, two numbers that multiply to negative 30 but add to negative 1, if I start going through the factors of 30, I discover I have negative 6 and 5. So here we have x minus 6 times x plus 5. So now I have two multiplication problems, one on the top, one on the bottom, and I notice they have something in common. So I can cancel those out, 
and I'm left with x minus 8 in my numerator and x plus 5 in my denominator. Now remember, we always have to note that if we canceled out something with an x in the denominator, we need to note when it equals 0. So x minus 6 would equal 0 when x is 6. So what we're going to write down here is that while x minus 8 over x plus 5 is the simplified expression, we also need to note that in the original expression, x could not equal 6 because that would result in the denominator equaling 0. So let's take a look at one final example here. So I noticed that I have a trinomial on the top, so I'm going to start off by trying to use the ABC strategy. So I have A equals 1, B equals negative 4, and C is equal to 16. So here in the top, I notice that if I'm going to use the ABC strategy, I need two numbers that multiply to be 16 and add to be negative 4. Now if I start thinking through the factors of 16, I realize that I can't find anything that multiplies to negative 16 or adds to negative 4. So for right now, I'm going to have to leave the numerator by itself as x squared minus 4x plus 16 because I don't know how to factor that further. And I'm going to have to hope that the denominator will factor out to be something that is you know, going to cancel out with that. So when I look here, I notice that I have a cube. And you probably forgot your factoring strategies that use cubes. So let's re-summarize them really quickly here. So remember, we had two factoring strategies. One was called the sum of cubes. And if you had something like a cubed plus b cubed, so we had a, a number or a letter cubed plus a number or a letter cubed, we can rewrite this as a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So that was something that we learned back when we talked about our factoring strategies. So the sum of cubes allows us to take two items that are being cubed and rewrite them in this way. Then we also have the difference of cubes that we can use to our advantage. So that would be if we had something a cubed minus b cubed. And we'd be able to rewrite that as a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. So we're going to see if we can use one of these to our advantage to help us rewrite that denominator piece. Now what I notice here is that this can really be rewritten as x cubed plus 4 cubed because 4 cubed I know is 64. So what I'm noticing here is I really have a situation where I have a set equal to x, b set equal to 4, and I'm adding them in the middle. So this is a sum of cubes situation. I have x cubed plus 4 cubed. So I can rewrite this using this little trick. Now how I remember it is that in the first parenthesis, you're always adding the a plus b just like you were in the original. So here this will become x plus 4 times we then have the a value squared and the b value squared both positive, and then we have the middle term that is the opposite of what it was in the original problem. So here it was a plus. So in this second set of parentheses, we're going to get a squared, which is x squared, minus a times b, which is 4x, plus b squared, which is 4 squared, which is 16. So from here, we can see that we actually have a piece in our denominator that matches our numerator. Now, I know that the numerator doesn't look like a multiplication problem here. What you can really do if you're going to want to cancel out the entire numerator is you can put parentheses around it and just put a little multiplication of 1 up there. You could say, well, I'm multiplying the whole thing by 1. And now, because we have a matching piece in the numerator and the denominator that's being multiplied, we can cancel them out. So from here, we can note that our simplified expression would become 1 over x plus 4. Now, I don't actually fully know what my denominator would equal if I set it equal to 0. 
So in the previous problems, I was able to write something like, you know, x can't equal 6 or x can't equal 0. Well, here I'm just going to write x squared minus 4x plus 16 cannot equal 0. And there's my final answer. So we're going to have to use all of our factoring strategies as we complete this lesson to simplify our rational expressions.